This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Um, you all ready for this? Mm -hmm. da -na -na this is a <laughs> sham. No. No. Nope. Just stop. Get real. Welcome to DBL, another week amongst us, and a lovely time being amongst you all. Yes. You look very you festive. Well. Thank you, you so much. In yes. your velvet, crushed, crushed. What velvet. is this, velvet? That's <laughs> a good line. All right, welcome to DBL. Stephanie Jones is here today, everybody. Yes, there we go. Up, girl? And we want to get to your Google searches. Ooh, ooh, it's that time of year when Google releases the terms we search for most this year, including the biggest news story, the war in Israel and Gaza was at the top of the list. The Titanic submarine came in second, followed by three different hurricanes, Hillary, Adelia, and Lee. Damar Hamlin was the most searched person after he suffered a cardiac arrest on live TV. At number two is Jeremy Renner, who suffered a horrific snowplow accident at the beginning of the year. And at number three, of course, Travis Kelsey, the Chiefs tight end, and Taylor Swift's boyfriend. Jeremy Renner was also the most searched actor, followed by Jamie Foxx. And at number three was Danny Masterson, who was sentenced to 30 years to life in prison. Now, it will come to no surprise that both Barbie and Oppenheimer were the most searched movies this year. And finally, consumers asked why eggs, Taylor Swift tickets, and sriracha bottles were so expensive this year. Did you search for any of these things, Stephanie? Uh, quite a few of them, yeah. Oh. Um, definitely Barbie and Oppenheimer. I think they're both fabulous. And I love the new controversial story of how uh, Oppenheimer begged uh, the Barbie team to not be released at the same weekend. And then to which Margot Robbie said, that makes us want to do it even more. If you're scared, you back down. Mm -hmm. And we wow. all know what happened there. And then it went huge. Erica, did you search for any of those? I did search Sriracha. Okay, thank did you. you? <laughs> because there was a Sriracha shortage. Really? And I've heard now... This. I, every time I open up the refrigerator to look for the sriracha, I'm so used to looking for that uh, red bottle with the green uh, lid, but there were other types of sriracha that started surging because uh -oh. people, <laughs> it wasn't just that brand. Surging so sriracha. every time I open, I'm always like, oh no, we don't have the sriracha. And Anthony's like, it's staring you in the face. I'm like, that's not the real sriracha. That's not the green lidded one. No. That's not the green lid. What about you, Al? That's funny. What about you? No, I don't think I searched any of these. I did, I think when we were covering the story, I remember searching Jeremy Renner because I, I and uh, Damar Hamlin as well, uh, because I just think those are two medical miracles that we mm -hmm. saw. I mean, if this happened two years ago, two, three years ago, those people would not, they, they are literally living examples of medical technology and how quickly they were able to get to Damar and how quickly help was able to get to Jeremy Renner because both of them should have lost their lives, and I'm glad they didn't. Yeah, it's interesting the disasters people looked up, the hurricanes. The, I also looked up Damar Hamlin because people were saying the way he fell was very different than people knew instantly, and I was like, well, what, what could that have been? And the response that happened, I don't know if you know, but... It was a horrifying night. It was. Mm -hmm. He gave 10 scholarships to each, uh, named after each 10 of the members that saved him of the support team staff. I thought that was amazing. All right, top searches of all time since 2004. I'm going to ask you this. Who do you think the most searched Grammy winner of all time since 2004 is? Taylor Swift. Okay. Ooh. That's really hard. Beyonce. Okay. I was going to say... Whitney Houston. Okay, and the answer is, anyone want to shout out what they think? Just say Al was right. The answer is Beyonce. Wow. I mean, she deserves it, let's be honest. That's very true. Athlete, who's the most searched athlete of all time since 2004? Oh, I'm going to go LeBron James. Nice. Kobe, oh, someone yeah. said? Yeah, Kobe. Kobe? Is, I'm going to go for David Beckham solely because of his documentary this year. The Beckham we're going to win? It's Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, yeah, oh, that yeah. was that's so high Am in right? plain sight. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, and let's talk about movie or TV cast of all time, <laughs> top searches since 2004. Movie or TV cast? Yeah. I'm going to go Gilmore Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Coming out with a, a curveball. <laughs> Do you, have you ever seen an I, episode? I don't know what that is. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm going to go with Friends. Yeah. Oh, that's oh. a good call. I would have said Friends as well because I've friends? sadly Matthew this year. Yeah. Still no, no. Gilmore Girls. Oh, Brit, you should have said your little wizarding prince, Harry, Harry Potter. Oh. Still? Harry wow. Potter. Oh, there's well, been since 2004. Four, so right. that's, yeah. And there's been so many reiterations of that. What do you guys think you Googled the most for yourselves? What do you guys get? Or should I not ask you guys that question? No, I think it's a little... <laughs> no. <laughs> what are we saying on TV or what does our uh, history say? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no. 
Uh, I. <sighs> Did you find yourself going into your lighting mode? Like, you know how you were looking into lighting? That's definitely what it was. It was uh, probably uh, weirdly color wheels for painting because I did a lot of painting and home decorating because uh, I had to replace a lot of things at home. So a lot, a lot of home goods for me. Home goods. Absolutely. Home goods. That's a good thing. What about you, Erica? Probably comeback stories. Nice. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Nice. That's a really good one. Yeah. That will make <laughs> you feel very better. general. <laughs> well, that's the great thing about comebacks. Everyone loves to see a comeback and the diversity of what they can be really brings everyone into something where you resonate with the comeback story. Can you imagine mm -hmm. someone not liking a comeback? I don't want that yeah. guy to come back. Yeah. <laughs> um, Steph, what was your most Googled kind of ideas uh, or gen genre? Probably wedding related. Wedding. Probably. You're going to go deep in the Pinterest world, trust me. Yeah, I don't get Pinterest. It oh. really drives me mad. I was what? a Pinterest girl. No, you I mean, don't like it? So many people have been like, show me the Pinterest board. I'm like, it doesn't exist. Oh, good for you. It does Except not exist. Good for you. I, I used to hate on Pinterest and I kind of get into it. Love yeah, I think, yeah. That's it. I think it's, it sticks you in. Everyone everyone that I've spoken to about Pinterest is so hardcore. It's unbelievable. They're very, yes. They stand for Pinterest. Really quick, what do you... What about you? I'm very I, curious. I learned a lot about money. I didn't understand anything about money at all. Okay, so did you put just money in there? Question yeah, mark? just like money. Money, what question is it? Question mark. Yes. Can I get some? Yeah. <laughs> I, get, like, I knew an IRA, but I knew IRA, and I'm like, are those the same thing? Our cameraman? <laughs> no, but honestly, I searched a lot about money, high Good yield savings accounts, yeah. boring things like that. What did we all do before Google? We had a macro and micro encyclopedia Britannica. So if someone questioned it during dinner, you had to race in and get the actual book. That's yes. brilliant. That, I mean, what did y'all do? I think you talked to people and you were just wrong about a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> people walked around not knowing stuff, Erica, and, well, and it was it was just the way the world was. And to what Tori has been Googling for the past year, which, by the way, I'm very proud of you. Thank Financial you. Financial literacy I will is be. the most important thing. Thank you, Erica. Um, but, yeah, you were asking people who you wanted to be like, not knowing if their way of doing things was going to be the best way for, for you. you. Right. And now we have so much information with people who, let's say you are looking for financial literacy. You're looking for people who can exemplify how this can affect your life the best. Totally. So I appreciate that about this new era of technology. I do too. I do too. Coming up on DBL, banning fat phobia. So we're talking about this new law that's aiming to stop discrimination in the workplace and beyond. And our interview with Harry Hamlin. He's telling us all about his new holiday cooking special. And he sounds like this. goes to Instagram for a wedding. She actually says she's Googling animals like, is my cat okay? I think that's a very, very real, real. I think very people, real. especially young parents, you Google because even though you might have somebody in your family's obviously experienced in having children, totally. you just don't, for a, you want to double check. So you're like, like your fire police, should fire my, Yeah, should my baby be crying this much? Right. What happens if I, I you know, and, and there's a lot of, and those are the kind of searches that lead people in terms of people going on certain lists where you start to yeah. get your algorithm changes. Sure. If you start asking baby questions, then they know. all of a sudden you They're fall sending in this you. whole new category and I'm sure uh, that's a big marketing it's thing like as well. It's like huge. Someone just wrote me, Tori, you shouldn't say Google. It's like calling tissues Kleenex, which is a brand, not a product. Just say, what did you search? However, I have this question. This was specifically a Google related segment. What's she using, Bing? Well, that's my question. Is there a monopoly of yes. Google? There's what no, else are you using but huge Google? article that oh, just came out, Jeeves? actually. Yeah. Yeah. No one's really using really it. Actually, but, there's like, the but do you know Google actually focus, or filters out other search websites? See, so now that that's Google an anti always pops That's forward. an antitrust issue right there with Is the it? Sherman antitrust. Yes, you can't have one search what? engine and no others. You, they're, they're there. It's just that everyone uses Google and they block it out. Well, that's, that's not a that's not legal. I think you type in Google and then you go to Google, so you're naturally picking that first because yep. you're not typing in but Yahoo. But that's because there's no competition. Yep. But they, there is. Well, there is. But they're eating it up. That's illegal. Mm -hmm. it is. I think we should Google this. I mean, there should be maybe some kind of. I don't think my kids would know what Ash Jeeves was. No, or Bing. Bing. They would have no idea.
This is a great discussion I can't wait to have. Welcome back to DBL. So weight discrimination is a big problem in America, with more than 40%, 40% of adults in the U.S. having experienced weight-related stigma. So here's the question. Should overweight people be a protected class? This is already the case in New York and Michigan for, for employment, and there's new legislation right here where we film in Colorado that would make it illegal to discriminate against people based on weight. Other states are also considering similar laws. Similar laws. Sorry, I always mess that up. What do we all think? Should overweight people be a protected class? Go to dblvote.com to weigh in. Al? Uh I think protected from discrimination, yes. But, you know, I guess thinking linearly, the only thing, the only question I would have with that is if you are part of a protected class, it's probably something that is a, an inherent characteristic that you are born with. You are female or you're trans or you are a person of color or, uh, you know, how you decide to express yourself in terms of your sexuality. Weight can fluctuate. So can you leave this protected class if you were to lose weight for whatever reason? It's so just, it's just, that uh, was my question. It, like, I thought a protected class was like, this is who you right. are, and you will always present as that. So, however, religion well, is also protected, which isn't always what you're That's a great point. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I think when you ask, should weight be a protected class, another way to ask, which makes me very uncomfortable about it, is, is it okay to discriminate against people who are overweight for employment? Like, and I that I can't get behind anyone being discriminated against. If you're in a, a position where you can do a job regardless of who you inherently are, then why should you not be protected in order to do said jobs? And the numbers are pretty jarring. Yeah. Like three percent for women, it's what three percent less. Women with obesity, thank you for this, um, earn six percent less yeah. than thinner women. Men with obesity earn three percent less than thinner men for identical work. There's also wrongful termination and very strong negative stereotypes for people of obesity with right. obesity. And we also know that obesity is also a byproduct of wealth or lack thereof. So essentially you're making it a worse situation for people who are unprotected to not make as much money as they're thinner counterparts or fit counterparts so it's kind of like this self-fulfilling prophecy right interesting like a class issue at that point. right uh steph what do you think about this and and let me say we have a much bigger epidemic of obesity than you do in england i assume uh, I, th I think well, it's rising though i do think it's rising yeah it's, it's not quite the same numbers as 40 over 40 percent in the u.s but i think the fact that it is nearly at 50 percent says that something does need to be done in the fact that why should nearly 50 percent of the population be discriminated against not earn the same wages that's absolutely shocking but I do find it interesting and that the hard thing is here is what then officially determines that you are overweight sure. who is the person is there a doctor that has to submit you right. to this because they're, they're reevaluating BMI and how that relates exactly to people so then it's up to the employer to have an in-house doctor to uh, individually every single person that comes through is checked and you either get put in the category or you don't and exactly what you said Al what happens if you did lose weight then are you removed from that I mean well let me, let me ask you guys a question, and I agree with a lot of what you're saying, but if obesity is considered a disease, right. would it not be already included in the Disability Act? Well, see, mm. I think much like, and this is a controversial topic, but I will say that there are components of race that are purely aesthetic. So you're talking about a component of obesity that's purely aesthetic. It's not about what your BMI is. It's not about what your doctor says. It's about someone looking at you mm. and deciding that they don't want you to work in their company mm. based on how you present. Mm. So there is an aspect where it has nothing to do with health, mm. which would have to do with being a protected class because of it is disability. considered a disease. Right. Mm. It's just blanket discrimination. Wow. But is there a part of us that does accept that when we go to a nightclub or a fancy restaurant or a, a high-end car dealership that there is going to be an attractive person there as the face of the company when you walk in and, and is it their usually, right to have that I'm not saying it's right, right or right, wrong right. I'm just saying do we all accept that like your receptionist would be a fit attractive person to be the front-facing person that 
your potential customer sees walking in. Right. Just and a question to think about. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying well, it's but what also you see. attraction is subjective. Mm -hmm. Like there was a really great um, part in uh, Sex and the City: The Reboot where Charlotte's so upset about like this little pocket of fat that she has, mm -hmm. and she's going back to work in this very high-end gallery, and the woman who is the curator of the gallery is a curvy mm -hmm. woman, and it changed her perspective of like what's considered attraction and what's appropriate mm. in those spaces. Mm -hmm. So all of it's subjective. And I think it's all changing. Let's take a look at poll results. Yes, people say should overweight people be a protected class? 31%. No, 69%. Interesting. We'll be right back. When you think of Santa Claus, this is probably what you have in mind. An iconic image of an older, portly man with a white beard wearing a red suit. For nearly a century, Santa has also been tied to Coca-Cola's holiday advertising. And some people claim the image of Santa started as a marketing ploy to sell soda. So let's verify. Did Coca-Cola invent the modern image of Santa? Our sources are the Metropolitan Museum of Art and Coca-Cola. The first Coke ad featuring Santa was in the 1920s. It took more than a decade for the soda company to fine tune the campaign that remains ingrained in our minds. The company admits it did not invent the Santa Claus we know today. The credit actually goes to artist Tom Nast, who drew this cartoon in Harper's Weekly during the Civil War, showing Santa arriving at a Union Army camp by sleigh to distribute gifts to soldiers. The Met explains Nast was born in Germany and based his depiction of Santa on European folk images of St. Nicholas that have existed for centuries. In 1881, Nast created this image of Merry Old Santa Claus, which, along with the 1822 poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas, helped lay the groundwork for Coke's artist. So it's false that Coca-Cola invented the modern image of Santa. They merely popularized it in their annual holiday ad campaign. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back to DBL. You've seen his cooking skills and famous sauce on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Now we get to see even more signature dishes in his very own cooking show. Earlier, we spoke with Harry Hamlin, and our guest panelist, Corinne Kaplan, was here. Take a look. All right, sir, you have been crowned king of the Bolognese. I say that I spent a year abroad in Italy. After your sauce became a star, really, in The Real Housewives, I want to know, are you planning on gifting the sauce Ooh. to people this Christmas? And can we get the recipe, or is it like a private He can't secret? give away his recipe. I'm just asking. Well, the recipe is kind of secret. Okay. I am keeping that under wraps. Uh, <laughs> It's not very complicated, but it's it's a little bit different from other recipes. Um, and yes, I am. Um, I have about 20 bottles in the freezer right now that I made wow. up last week, and they're going out to, yeah, to the uh, my close friends. You know, Harry, I got to ask you because you you know you cook with your niece, but she's classically she's a classically trained chef. So I got to ask you: Do you ever try and outdo her on dishes, or is it a little intimidating? Are you kidding me? I don't know what I'm doing. You know, and, and here's. Here's something that uh, is kind of ironic. I have never seen a cooking show of any kind. No way. Um, so cooking shows do not interest me in the least, and uh, so I've never watched one. So I have no idea what they're supposed to look like. I have no idea, you know, <clears throat> where you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to say, what you're supposed to do. I don't know. I'm just cooking the food. And I brought in my niece because AMC came to me and they asked me to do a cooking show. And I kind of go, what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why me? And, the, and uh, I guess it's because of the things you said. The, uh, actually, the, I think the wives of the executives had seen that on The Real Housewives. Right. And so they went to the execs and said, you got to give him a cooking show. Oh, yep. well, anyway, I said, well, look, the only way I'm going to consider doing this is I have one condition. I have to do it with my niece who was a trained Cordon Bleu chef. Wow. She's wow. an executive chef. She cr helped create the menu for Pret-a-Manger and Le Pen Quotidien. So she's, I mean, she's 
bona fide. And, uh, I'd say so. so. I, I, but, <laughs> yeah. If she's my wing person, I'll do it. And uh, it was kind of Abbott and Costello in the kitchen. Nice. Harry, my love, you've had some pretty amazing guests on your show, from hosting a dinner for your wife, Lisa, to Kenny G. Yes. So tell us, what are your tips on being the ultimate dinner party host? Um, if I had those tips, I'd be probably a very wealthy man. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you, know, I, you know, I like to do simple stuff. I don't like to do anything too complicated. I like to make, may have the food taste really good, like it all to come out warm at the same time. There's a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of things that go into throwing a dinner party for four to six people, which is kind of what this show is all about. You know, th that, you know, you can, you can make a real mess of everything or you can come out, you know, and be, and be smooth and you can spend a lot of time with your guests and not have to be running back and forth into the kitchen and that's kind of what we're trying to present here um, it's pretty simple I like that. that's a great note yeah, yeah. I agree. speaking of making a mess of things when you're preparing large meals do you like all hands on deck like everybody in your business in the kitchen or do you kick people out and like to handle it on your own I kick him out. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, no, I, I can't really delegate that well. You know, with, with Renee in the kitchen this time, she was mainly delegating to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, and I was learning a lot from her. I mean, who knew? I didn't know how to chop yeah. something. Know how to, uh, there I am trying to peel look it under. Look at her. That, you know? <laughs> Come on, I mean, look at that. I'm making a mess of it. So. You were her Sue in yeah, a way. I like her judgment face. It's good. Okay, so LA Law is on Hulu now, but I hear you've never watched it until now. Why haven't you seen it, and what do you think of the series after watching some of it? Okay, it's it's freaking incredible. I mean, I, I, I didn't watch it at the time because my wife happened to be on another show on another network at exactly the same time throughout the entire my five year run on the show. Wow. So it was like we didn't have a VCR and we would have had to have two VCRs and you know, they were just kind of getting started and then I didn't know how to work them anyway. So I uh, we just went out to dinner on Thursday night and uh, so I never saw the show. Um, so I'm up to episode 14 now, and it is, I mean, I am blown away by awesome. this. And it's, it's actually very contemporary. And like in the first episode, there's a whole story about a trans person working in the office. Wow. Uh, this is 1986. Right. Wow, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. DBL Nation, be sure to watch In the Kitchen with Harry Hamlin, a holiday special on AMC Plus and IFC December 13th. Thank you again, Harry. Great to see you. We'll be right back. Appreciate you. Bye, Good. Harry. You. Bye, Harry. January 1st is National Hangover Day. People across social media are sharing their tips and tricks to combat the effects of alcohol for those who may have drank a little bit too much. But like this tweet suggests, people claim that there's one cause of bad hangovers that we can't control, getting older. But is that true? Let's verify. We went to these sources for an answer. The liver is the main detoxifier in the body, and liver enzymes help us break down alcohol. Emmanuel Amenke, who studies internal medicine at UCLA Medical Center, says the older we get, the less efficient enzyme production is. So it takes longer for our bodies to sort through the effects of heavy drinking in comparison to when we were younger. So if a 25-year-old person and a 55-year-old person were to drink three margaritas with the same alcohol content at the same place, who would feel the sting more? Amenike says more than likely it would be the 55-year-old. The reason being that the younger person has organs that are uh, more efficient, has blood flow that is uh, understandably uh, faster and reaches more areas and also has the ability to uh, have his tissues, which are more sensitive, clear the toxin uh, much faster than the older person. But according to Jesus Chaveria, a researcher at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health in Toronto, there is no one-size-fits-all explanation to understanding hangovers. We know that uh, one of the biggest predictors of hangover isn't even the level of intoxication you are. It's the level of subjective intoxication. What some research has found is that no matter how much you drink, if you drink more than your usual amount, your, your um, likelihood of experiencing a hangover and the severity of it goes up. He says studies on the impact and direct causes of hangovers are still developing and more research is needed to draw conclusions. Melissa Majumeter, a registered dietitian and nutritionist based out of Atlanta, agrees that there are more factors at play than just age and liver metabolism, like proper sleep. Studies from Harvard University and the Mayo Clinic say dehydration also plays a big role. 
So we can verify the claim that hangovers get worse with age. Well, it needs context. Age definitely plays a factor, but there are multiple reasons why people can feel hungover. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Daytill. To receive daily fast facts to your phone, text Verify to 202-410-8808. And to sign up for our newsletter, visit verifythis.com slash email. When you have an alcoholic drink, you've likely also felt warmer. So there's a belief that drinking booze can help you stay warmer outdoors on a cold night. But is that really the case? Let's verify. Our sources are the California Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control, the Banyan Treatment Centers, the National Gallery of Art, and Dr. Harriet Davis with Novant Health. Alcohol doesn't actually increase your body temperature. Instead, it makes your heart rate increase and your blood vessels dilate or widen, tricking your body into thinking it's overheating. The process moves heat away from your core and to your skin to cool you down. Davis says this means if you're outside in cold weather, then drinking alcohol could increase your risk of hyperthermia. So no, drinking alcohol does not help you stay warmer. It actually cools you down. Welcome back. The holidays are here and many people are starting to think about New Year's resolutions and with most of us focused on improving our health. It's time for some joint and muscle support brought to you by Omega XL. So if you want to achieve your goals in the new year, experts recommend making resolutions that are specific, measurable, and reasonable. So instead of committing to your dream body, consider things like getting eight hours, hours of sleep, eating a healthy breakfast, or taking your vitamins. Omega XL has improved the lives of millions of consumers supported by 30 years of clinical research. Omega XL's powerful and proven benefits have transformed the lives of athletes, celebrities, and dedicated daily users. So call 1-800-814-6985 or visit OmegaXL.com for more information. Regarding fat phobia, we have a comment from Just Me. Why would anyone want to work for a company or boss that bases hiring choices on a person's looks or weight instead of their qualifications? I don't think they would have a choice. I think that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. Am I right? I, if you have one fast food restaurant in your neighborhood and that's it, right. you don't get a choice. And and it's not that employer's choice to discriminate. What you do is you fight and you get, you, you, if you want to work there, you should have every right to work there. You don't look around for somebody that's willing to that's right. let you in. Come on right. now. We'll fight. see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about.
get real. No, no, nope. y'all.